let's talk about different ways of viewing and organizing our scene. What we see in our viewport actually has a pretty big impact on how we select stuff. For example, in object mode, if I take my cube here and we use our new duplicate command, if I hit shift D and duplicate a cube back, and I'll do this a few more times, and then I'll just move my viewport such that the first cube is covering all of the other ones. If I left click to select something, it's going to select the cube on top. But if I select again, it's going to choose the cube behind it. And if I choose one more time, it's going to select the cube in the back. And it'll just cycle through all of these as I keep clicking, which is a really helpful way to select. Now, if I use my box select tool though, and I left click and drag, it'll select everything that's behind it as well. And same thing here with the this cube, if I you know zoom in really close so it covers the entire scene, and I left click and drag over everything, just like that, then it'll also select you know all of those objects behind it. But this is a little bit different than what happens by default in edit mode. So let me go ahead and delete my objects here, and actually let's use a little bit more of a complicated object so we can see this better. I'll delete my cube and then hit Shift A, go to Mesh and add a monkey. So now we can use Suzanne as an example. Let's hit Tab to go into edit mode and try to move all of these vertices. We already know that if we hit A, we can select everything. And so I might want to hit G after that and then just move this somewhere else. But if I try to do that same thing with box selection, first I'll just left click in empty space to deselect everything. If I left click and select, it looks like everything's been selected. But if I hit G and start to move this, then you can see that obviously that's not the case. The faces in front have blocked the selection of everything that's behind it. So if I try to you know, select everything here, only half of the object is going to be selected. Oftentimes this is really helpful because if I'm zoomed in on an object and I you know, select these vertices over here, I of course don't really want it to select everything on the bottom as well. That would be a real pain to work with. But sometimes it's super helpful to be able to select everything regardless of what's in front or behind it. So for that we can turn on X-ray view or go into wireframe view. First let's talk about X-ray. To turn it on, we use this icon here in the top right of the header, which is two squares, and one of them is kind of in front of the other, and there's a dotted line on the one in the back. If we turn that on, then we can see that we can actually see all of our vertices now, and our object has become semi-transparent. Now if I left click and drag and box select this entire thing, then we can see that all of my vertices have been selected, and I can easily move this around as I wanted to. So you can remember this by knowing that in edit mode, if you can see it, you can select it. And if you can't see it, then you can't select it. And in order to be able to see everything, turn on X-Ray. For now, I'll turn it off though, and we'll see another mode that works in a very similar way. And that's wireframe view. That's the icon right next to it. So far in this course, we've only been working in solid view, which is just a basic solid representation of our scene. But if we switch over to wireframe view, which is just a circle with some wires on it, when it comes to edit mode, this does the exact same thing as X-Ray. In fact, you can see that if I switch over to solid view, X-Ray turns off. And if I switch over to wireframe view, X-Ray turns on. Now we can also turn off X-Ray for wireframe view. And now we just see the faces as blank, but that's not generally very useful. If we switch over to object mode, I'll hit tab here and then left click to deselect everything. Then you can see that now we just have a wire representation of the scene. And if we add more objects, I'll just take this monkey and duplicate it a bit, maybe add a ground. Uh, shift a mesh and plane you can see exactly how this is working now if you want you can adjust the options for wireframe view or solid view by clicking this drop down next to these shading options here we can set things like the color you can set it by object or random you can set the background of the viewport to whatever you want or you can change the x-ray value if you set it to something here in the middle let's say like 0 0.5 then actually I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see this, then all of the lines that are being blocked by the faces just become a little bit more dim. So as I turn this up, they become more and more dim. As I turn this down, they become more and more opaque. If it's set to zero, then everything is equally visible. Turning this up is just a helpful way to actually see the shape of this while still in wireframe view. Most of the time though, we're going to be working in solid view. We can also see the options for that, but there's quite a few more and we don't have time to get into all of them. For now though, I'll set the background back to the default, and I'll show you how we can change the lighting just by clicking on this sphere here and choosing any one of these options. Or we could also choose a random color per object. If you're curious though, I would recommend going through and exploring all of these options because they can be kind of fun to play with. Now, while we're on the topic of what we see and what we don't, let's talk about overlays. 
overlays are everything drawn in the viewport that's not the actual geometry itself. That would include the grid, the lights, the selection outline, anything like that, the 3D cursor, all of that extra stuff. If we want to turn that off and just see what this would look like without all of that, then we can turn off overlays here, which looks kind of like a mask icon. If I turn that off, then we just see our plain scene. Most of the time though, we'll want that on. If you want to customize what you see and what you don't, then you can use this drop down arrow. And for example, we could turn off the grid floor or turn off the 3D cursor or turn on wireframe overlays just so we can see the wires of all of our objects or anything like that. A helpful one for some people might be turning on scene statistics, which will give us information about our scene over in the top left of the viewport, but I'll turn that off. Lastly, we can also show or hide gizmos, which are all of the little interactive tools in the 3D viewport. Right now, we're not really seeing many except the axes here in the top right, but if we switch to our move tool, then we can see our move gizmo. And if for whatever reason we wanted to turn that off completely, then we could go up to the icon that's next to the overlays. It looks kind of like a bow and arrow in a way, but it's just a representation of the rotation move tool. If we turn that off, then all of those will go away. So if we wanted a completely clean viewport without anything else that's extra, then we can turn off both gizmos and overlays. But most of the time, we want to work with those on. Now there are some situations where I want to change between solid view and wireframe pretty quickly, or use one of the other shading modes. For that, I can use the hotkey Z. If I hit that, then it'll bring up a pie menu. I can switch between any of these other shading modes, and we'll talk about these other two in just a second. But for now, I can swipe left and go to wireframe, or hit Z, swipe right, and go to solid view. One option in the user preferences that I find really helpful though, is adding the overlays and the gizmos to that menu as well. So let's go to edit, and down to preferences, Go to the key map section, and under 3D view, turn on extra shading pie menu items. I'll go ahead and save my preferences, but yours will save automatically. I'll go ahead and minimize that. And now if I hit Z in the 3D viewport, now I have a couple extra options. I can still swipe right and left for solid and wireframe view, but I can also swipe down to toggle X-ray on and off. That makes it really quick to work with while I'm modeling. I can also hit Z and swipe up to toggle off overlays. So I like to work with those extra options enabled, but it's personal preference. In addition to controlling how we see our objects, we can also control which objects we see. In our outliner, on the same row as our object, you'll see a little eye icon and a camera icon. If we turn the eye icon off and click it, then you'll see it turns into a closed eye icon and that object has disappeared. So this is how we hide our objects. If you want to hide everything, then you can also just click and drag down the list. Similarly, we can click and drag upwards to unhide everything. You might have to be a little bit careful with this though, because if you hide something, you might forget that it exists. So always look in the outliner. I'll go ahead and turn this back on, and let's look at the keyboard shortcut for that. If I select an object, I can just hit H to hide. And I can do that with any number of objects, so I can box select these two monkeys as well, and hit H to hide. To unhide a specific object, I have to go over to the outliner and toggle it there, but if I just want to unhide everything, then I can use the hotkey Alt-H. We can also do this from the menu by going to Object, Show and Hide, and either Show Hidden Objects, or Hide Selected, or Hide Unselected. But I think the hotkey of H and Alt-H is pretty easy to remember. The camera icon next to the eye icon shows what gets rendered, which is separate from what we actually see here in the scene. I won't show that right now though, because we're not quite ready to talk about rendering just yet. There is one other way to make something invisible in the viewport though, and this is something that can trip up a lot of beginners if they open up a file from somewhere else and they don't notice it, then it can, it can really be confusing. And I think it should be enabled by default, but for whatever reason it isn't. But if we just go to the filter options over here in the outliner header, go down to our restriction toggles, which shows which icons we can see and which ones we can't. If we turn on the monitor icon, and let's also just turn on the selection icon as well, just to show what that does then we can see all of these new toggles have been enabled. As you might expect, the mouse selection icon, if we turn that off, then we just can't select that object. I can select all of my other objects in the viewport, but not that one. But the monitor icon will also make our objects disappear. This is really important to know because if we have this restriction toggle off, which it is by default, then we would never know where our object is. It just looks grayed out for no reason. So that's why I think it should be on by default, but again, if your object is grayed out for whatever reason, then turn that on, and then you'll see that the monitor icon is probably off. The reason that these two are separate things is for a lot more of an advanced use case, so I won't get into it now. But just know that if you have the monitor icon off, which is the display in viewport icon, if I hide some objects, and I'll just hit H to hide these guys, and I hit Alt-H, 
then it'll turn the eye icon back on, but it won't turn the monitor icon back on. So it is a separate thing. For now though, just know that if your object is randomly grayed out, then you want to look for the monitor icon. Next, let's talk about collections because that's how we can manage the visibility for a whole bunch of objects all at the same time. In the outliner, you can see up at the top, we have what's called the scene collection. And underneath that, we just have something called collection. If we use the eye icon on the collection as a whole, then it'll also hide all of the objects underneath it. You'll notice that these objects though, don't have their eye icons hidden, but they're just grayed out. That means that it's being overridden by the collection. Now, if I hit Alt H in the viewport, it won't actually come back. So to turn it back on, we need to turn it back on in the outliner. Similarly, if we disable selection for an entire collection, then we won't be able to select anything that's inside of that collection. And we can see that it's inside the collection because it's nested underneath and has this line running down the left side. I'll turn selection back on here. And let's look at the one icon that's a little bit different here for collections, and that's the checkbox. If we turn that off, then you can see not only is it grayed out, but all of the objects disappear here as well. Turning this whole collection off means that it won't be visible or selectable anywhere. If we turn it back on though, all of our objects are still intact. Let's see how this is helpful by separating our scene into a couple different collections. So instead of just having one called collection, let's have one called monkeys. I'll double click it and call it monkeys. And then let's create a new collection. If I want it to be a top level collection, then I'll select the scene collection here and then use the new collection icon. New objects and new collections will always be added to the active collection. And so that's why I selected the top level one first. That'll create a collection two here at the bottom. And I'll call this one rendering. To move all of my rendering stuff into this rendering collection, I'll just select my light, shift select my camera, and then left click and drag that into the rendering collection. Now I can easily hide all of these objects independently. Let's add one more collection just for the ground. I'll click the new collection again and double click the collection name and I'll call it ground. Then this time, instead of taking my plane and dragging and dropping it into the ground collection, I can also do that from the viewport. To do that, I'll select the ground and go to object, collection, and move to collection. Then I'll just set it into the ground. We could also use the hotkey for that, which is M. And you can think about that as M as in move to collection. But what's interesting is that you can have an object in multiple collections at the same time. So for example, let's say we wanted to have a collection that's only our mesh objects. Well, we could create a new collection and I'll just call this one mesh objects. And then I can select all of my mesh objects. So not the light and not the camera. And instead of moving it to the collection, I can link it to the collection. So object collection and link to collection, or we could use the hotkey shift M. I'll link to mesh objects. And now you can see that they appear in both collections. Now notice that if I turn off my eye icon for the plane, it disappears completely. And it also turns the eye icon off for the one above it because they're the exact same object. But if I turn the eye icon off for the mesh objects collection as a whole, then none of our objects have actually disappeared because they're still visible with our other collections. So this can get a little bit messy. For the most part though, when you're starting out, you probably won't need to have objects in multiple collections. So I wouldn't really worry about it too much. But now let's also look at how to delete collections. Well, we could either right click and then just hit delete, or we could use the delete key on our keyboard. So I'll select the mesh objects collection because I don't need it anymore and just hit delete. Now all of the objects that were in it have jumped outside and are just in the scene collection. I'll hit control Z and undo that and bring our collection back with all the objects underneath it. And if we wanted to not have all of those duplicates, we could right click and instead of hit delete, we could delete hierarchy. Now we see each object only once in our outliner. Now, if I hit delete hierarchy on a collection where our objects aren't in any other collection, then they'll be deleted from the scene as well. So be careful with that. If you want to select all of the objects in a collection, then you can also just right click and choose select objects. I know we've already covered a lot of new things in this video, but I want to mention one more thing specifically for people coming from other 3D software. And that's that collections might not work quite as you expect, because if you select a collection, it's not going to select all of the objects and the collection isn't actually a thing in the scene, so we can't move it around or anything like that. So if you want to group your objects in a way that's a little bit more similar to how other software does it, then you might want to use an empty object, which is just an object with no actual data inside of it. So if we hit Shift A, we can go down to empty, and I'll just add a plain axis. And let's say we wanted to group all of these monkeys together. Well, I could just double click the empty name, and I'll call this monkeys, just the same as the collection and then I'll parent all of our monkeys to it. 
So I could either select all of them and then make this empty the active object and hit control P in the viewport, or I can use shift. I'll select all these in the outliner, hold shift, left click and drag, and set the monkeys empty as the parent. Now you can see they've all been nested underneath here. And if I wanted to move the monkeys all at once very easily, I could just select the monkeys empty and move that around instead, scale it, rotate it, or do whatever else I need to do there. You can get sort of kind of close to the grouping features that you might be used to, but it won't be exactly the same. Collections are useful all throughout Blender, so I'd really recommend getting used to them, even if it's just for basic scene organization at first. Before you move on to the next lesson, try showing and hiding the different things that we talked about in this video. That would include working with X-ray view or wireframe shading, toggling overlays and gizmos on and off, hiding and unhiding objects, as well as hiding and unhiding vertices inside of those objects. And lastly, turning collections on and off.